right, well, welcome to uh, this time in which we're getting ready to celebrate Holy Mass. Um, right now, this is the Saturday Vigil, so it's the beautiful thing about um, uh, the importance of, of Sunday Mass is that it gets stretched all the way into Saturday. And even at this time right now, it's sort of like we're already in the midst of Saturday, or in the midst of Sunday. Um, so I want to, um, because especially there's probably some, some kids that are watching right now, so I'd love to, as we walk through this Mass, to be able to have an opportunity to be able to talk about some of the special things um, in Mass, and, and also really to talk about what that word Mass means. Um, so the Mass, or in Spanish it's La Misa, and does anyone here know, what does Mass mean? Besides, there's another word that means like a lot, like a mass of something or, you know, something like that. But the word mass and misa, it, it actually comes from a word called miseo, which means missile. So isn't that wild? So if you think about a missile, it's something that starts here and it goes like a rocket all the way to another place. And there's so much energy there, there's so much power there, it's explosive. And the church uses that word to talk about what we're celebrating here. So what I like to tell the kids that, that go to my school, I like to say that whenever you hear at the very end of Mass, it says, the Mass is ended, go in peace. And when you hear that word Mass, it means it, it, it's, it means you're being sent out, but not merely just kind of like, okay, let's go have a great day. But it's kind of like, ha, have you ever seen like a, a rubber band, a big rubber band, and you maybe put like a, um, something inside of it, maybe like a, a, a little ball or something like that, and you pull it back and pull it back and pull it back and pull it back. And then what would happen? Maybe like a water balloon. That's even better. Imagine if I did that with a water balloon. I have that water balloon right here. What would happen if I let it go? It would get launched. And it would go And be able to land with such power. So when we go to Mass, what Jesus Christ wants to do through the power of the Holy Spirit, He wants to fill us with His power, with His strength, he wants to fill us with this spiritual dynamite, his love, his mercy. He wants to heal us. He wants to set us free, like we're going to hear about in the story of Lazarus coming out of the tomb. And then he's going to give us his very body and blood, the Eucharist. His body, blood, soul, and divinity. When we hear those words, this is my body, this is my blood, it actually becomes Jesus himself. And he's going to give us that communion to be able to receive. Now, right now, we're kind of under special circumstances, so there isn't anyone else really here in the church. And usually the church is full, and we receive communion right here. But in these special moments, when you're watching it through maybe your computer, maybe your television, maybe your iPad or your phone or whatever you're looking at right now, what Jesus says is that during this time, I'm still going to feed you. I'm still going to take care of you. And I'm going to be that good shepherd that's going to lead you to those life-giving streams. So what we're going to be able to do later on is we're going to make a spiritual communion in which Jesus is going to pour out all of these graces, all of the strength to fill you, to be like that rubber band, ready to be launched. And then after Mass, when it says, go in peace, you could just think of yourself as going, bah! with such joy, to be able to land wherever the Lord calls you. So that's the adventure of every time that we celebrate Mass. There's an adventure where Jesus is like, okay, I'm pulling you back for an adventure, and now I'm going to send you forth, just like a missile, to be able to go and help 
others. So this is a missile that doesn't, doesn't hurt, that doesn't destroy. It's a missile that helps. It's a missile that loves. And so the Lord is going to, in a sense, fire you right back like a catapult, like that water balloon, to be able to go into your family, to be able to love one another, to be a true neighbor to one another. So whenever you hear that word, mass, just think, oh, I'm getting ready to be launched. And then God is going to launch you with his love to be able to reach um, very powerfully those that are around you. And right now, those people are probably your family members, you know, or maybe people that you'll talk on the phone or on different things like that. Um, and it's important for us to, to think about how are we going to be neighbor to them today and tomorrow and the next day. So as we get ready for Mass, you might have seen here, I actually have, I don't have my Mass clothes on right now. We call them vestments. But I thought this might be kind of fun to be able to um, be able to put these on so maybe you can see how a priest prepares for Mass. Now, just like a knight, I love knights, they put on armor, they have a helmet, they have a breastplate, they have a shield, they have all these really cool things. Well, a priest, when he puts on his vestments, those are the priest clothes for Mass, um, each one of them have a different, a different meaning. And it's like being suited up with armor. So, this, does anyone know what this is called? This is called an alb. Alb means white. And guess what color this is? White. So if I put this on, this is the first thing that I put on, and it reminds us of our call to be holy. Our call to be separated, to be called for a special mission, to serve God, to love him, to bring people to Jesus. And even in the Bible, it says um, in the book of Revelation, there's this image of what the saints are wearing is something that's a little like this. They wear these white robes. So that's kind of just a sign to remind us of, um, of our own baptism, too. That when you were baptized, you had a white garment on. You had a white um, uh, clothes or dress or something like that. So now this, this is a belt. It's called a cincture. And so if I put this on, it reminds us of one of the parts of the armor of God, the belt of truth. And so it can, it can remind us to make sure that we're held tight by the love of the Lord, to always be truthful and to always have that purity of heart, which means that we want to love God with 100% of our heart and not just 50% of our heart. So I put that on like that. Do you see how I kind of looped it around like that? Because watch what will happen when I put this next part on. Now this, this kind of has a funny name. It's called a stole. And it doesn't mean that I stole it. It's just a different, it's a different name. And it, it reminds us of Christ's authority so when it goes on the shoulders like that, it's a sign that whenever a priest has this on, that ultimately Jesus himself wants to work through that priest to bring us forgiveness, to bring us himself, Jesus, the Eucharist, to bring us blessings, to bring us the Lord's presence. So I put this on here, but that's the Lord's um, sign of, of his authority that he wants to work um, through the priest. Now, do you see how I just kind of went like this and went like that? So that's kind of how they would um, put on their belts and, you know, in the times of the Bible, because they didn't really have buckles and stuff like that. So they just used ropes like this. Now this is called a chasuble, Spanish casuya. And I put it on like this, and it actually means little house. So if I kind of go like this, Kind of like I'm a little house right now. Now, this I wear when I celebrate Mass. And when I put this on, it's a reminder that the authority, remember the stole right here, the power of Jesus Christ, that he came not to serve himself, but to always serve others, always to love others, and to, to be a servant of all. 
And so when I put this on, it's a reminder that when I serve all of you in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm supposed to do it with mercy, with humility, and with a servant's heart. And that's kind of for all of us, too. Whenever we're going to, um, to do something in the name of Christ, we want to make sure that we're not doing it in our own name, but that we're always doing it in Jesus' name. Okay, so we're going to get ready for Mass right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to move this camera to be able to... Um, yep, we're just going to move it around. And then we're just going to pray a special prayer. Just getting our hearts ready for this wonderful moment in which Jesus is going to come on this altar. He's going to speak to us in his own words of scripture. And he's going to tell us how much he loves us. He's going to tell us how much he wants to free us from all the things that get in the way of, uh, of the happiness that he wants to give us. a little prayer. Jesus, I thank you for loving me, and I thank you for this opportunity of coming to me in a special way during Holy Mass. Help me to make this a special day. Help me to be able to pay attention to the words that I hear. Help me to make sure that my heart is open to always say yes to you like Mary did. Jesus, help me to not be distracted, but to focus on you. And help me to have that grace to be filled up with strength and power so that I can be like that missile going out, being shot forth to bring lots of good and mercy towards others that I meet. We pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed Mother, help us to have a good celebration of Mass today. Amen. And now we're going to be opening with our opening song, uh, Amazing Grace. This is one that you probably know, so I encourage you to maybe to, to stand during this time and to really sing it with, with all of your heart. Amazing Grace. Jesus. Because you know, kids' prayers 
are some of the most powerful prayers out there. They're like super, super, super awesome prayers that just go straight to heaven. So if you just go, right, if you think about something that you want to pray for, and then you just go down to where your heart is, and you just say, Jesus, hear my prayer. Know that that's like, again, like a little prayer rocket ship that goes all the way up. And when, and when God hears those prayers of children, there's like a big dance party that happens up in heaven. They're just like, whoa, that is so awesome that they're praying right now. And they're just like praising God. They're just like, wow, this is so awesome. And God himself is like, wow, that's an awesome prayer warrior down there. So I want you just to think about who's someone that you can pray for now. Maybe there's someone that maybe isn't feeling well right now. Maybe pray for them. Maybe there's someone who maybe is afraid. Maybe pray for them. Maybe someone who's lonely. Maybe pray for them. Maybe someone who is poor. Maybe one of the souls in purgatory that's getting ready to meet Jesus but need our help right now. Let's pray for them. So just take a moment and just ask the Lord as we begin this Mass, to hear and answer that prayer. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Now during this time, think about those ways in which we haven't said yes to God those areas that maybe we, we didn't follow what God wanted us to do to be that better version of ourselves. Let's ask the Lord, Lord, please forgive me. Help me to clear my heart so that I can receive your love today. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. beseech you, Lord our God, may we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to hear the words of our Lord in the scriptures. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and have you rise from them, O oh my people, I will put my spirit in you that you may live, and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised, and I will do it, says the Lord. The 
word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my voice in supplication. With the Lord there is mercy and fullness of redemption. If you reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
the sisters of Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but it is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been at the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who, who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you are always, that you always hear me. But because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary and seen what he had done began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we just heard in our reading today this powerful story about Lazarus, one of the friends of Jesus, someone that he was so sad to see die that Jesus himself started to cry. He started to feel sorry started to feel that sorrow. But he says these words. He says, Father, I know that you always hear me. He always knew that his heavenly Father would always provide. And so he cries out in that loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And it says the dead man came out. I mean, imagine if you were there. You'd be like, whoa. Whoa. But you know what's really interesting is when he came out, it said that he was, he was wrapped with cloth around his legs, around here, around his shoulders, around his face. He looked a little like a mummy. You know, have you ever seen a mummy before where they're all kind of wrapped up like that? But just think about, he came out, Lazarus came out like that, and then Jesus says, to the people around. Untie him and let him go. So Jesus raised him from the dead. 
he brought him out of the tomb, because it probably wasn't very nice being inside the tomb. I don't know, have you ever been in maybe a room? I remember um, I used to have this happen to me sometimes where I had a, one of those spooky basements. Have you ever had a spooky basement before? And I was down there, I was playing, and I think someone upstairs, they didn't realize I was down there, and so they turned off the light, they closed the door, and I was stuck in the spooky basement when it was dark. Now, Jesus is the one who comes, and he opens that door, because I remember finally when I'm like, hey, let me out of here, because I couldn't figure out how to get out, and then finally someone opened the door, and then I could finally see again. And that's what Jesus does for us when we come to him. We're stuck. We're in one of those, those dark rooms that are kind of spooky without Jesus. But when we cry out to Jesus to say, Jesus, help me, he opens the door. And he comes down. And he brings us out of that spooky place. So he does that with Lazarus. But now Lazarus, he's still bound up. He still has a whole bunch of mummy cloth all around him. I don't think he can do much like that. I don't know if you've ever been kind of wrapped up with cloths and things like that before. Maybe you have, maybe you haven't, I don't know. But imagine this. Who here has ever bundled up to go out and play in the snow? I remember I had to put on my snow pants. I had to put on my big, big, giant coat, my big, giant boots. And then there were some times in which it was super cold out that my mom would say, well, let's put on another coat. And let's put on another coat. And then pretty soon, I'd put on a hat and another hat and another hat. And I'd put on each of those hoods. And then all you could see was this. And I kind of looked like this. And I just kind of walked around. I mean, I probably looked like a mummy, you know. Uh, you know, I'm kind of walking around like this. And, you know, if I ever fell down in the snow, guess what would happen to me? I'd get stuck there. I couldn't really do much because I had so much clothing on. And I couldn't really do anything. I was like a giant, um, parents, you'll remember this, a giant Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. I was just kind of walking around like that. That was the first thing that popped on my head right now. So imagine we have all that stuff on. And imagine maybe we're not just going to, um, to play out in the snow, but let's say we're going to school with all that stuff on. And have you ever had a backpack on that has a really, really, really heavy book inside of it? You know, like one of those ones like that big, that's like as heavy as you? And we put that in there, and you're all bundled up like this. It's very difficult to do a lot of things. Now imagine if you couldn't just take all that stuff off once you get to, once you get back home or once you get to school. Imagine all that stuff is stuck on you. Like, how would you play soccer? I mean, imagine that. You go like that, and maybe you try to swing your foot to try to kick, and then you fall over. Or you're trying to be the goalkeeper and you just kind of fall over because of the heavy backpack with that really, really heavy book in there. Imagine trying to eat breakfast. You try to go for the cereal and you got all the stuff on and you just sort of fall forward into your milk. Imagine you're trying to, to, to greet someone, say hello. You go like this, hello, and then you'd fall forward. So it's no fun being bundled up with all those different things. That's what Lazarus was like at this time. Lazarus had all this stuff on, and he was just kind of stuck. So Jesus, he gets him out of the tomb, but then do you see what he says? He says to his friends around him, I want you to take off all of those cloths, and all that stuff was there, and let him go free. And that's one of the beautiful mysteries of our faith, is that it's always Jesus working. It's not like half Jesus and half us. It's 100% Jesus always. But there's this beautiful way in which he takes us 
and he says, you know what? I want you to be a part of my great adventure. I want you to be used to help someone be set free. And that's what we call being a true friend to one another. Our Christian faith teaches us that we can't do this journey alone. If you think about all those great stories that are out there, one of my favorite is the Lord of the Rings. There are companions for that journey. They can't go by themselves. Because if they try to do it by themselves, then, then they're not going to be able to make it there. Our journey to heaven, we can't do it on our own. Because we're walking, and then we just start getting all the stuff on us that starts weighing us down. And we need to have friends among us who are able to help us in those moments. When maybe we're getting weighed down and maybe we're ready to fall, to be able to lean on them. And we do this through prayer. We can do this for praying for one another. Just like right now, I'm praying for you and you're praying for me. And maybe you're praying for your friends who are in a different house that maybe you, you, know, you aren't able to see them just yet. But that prayer is helping them right now to be able to say yes to God more. To be able to not have those bandages and stuff like that on them. So that they can experience that happiness. That's When you think about it, that's what when the soul's in purgatory, so those who have died and they're really, really close to meeting the Lord in heaven, but they need some healing and they need to kind of get ready for that. Well, our prayers here will help them there to take off all those cloths and things that burden them down. And so it's important to think about how to be a true friend to someone. First of all, to think about who are the friends that are around me? Because whoever is around me, that's the kind of person that I'm going to be. So if I'm around a bunch of people that don't want to tell the truth, well, guess what's going to happen to me? I'm going to start getting burdened with all that stuff of not being a truthful person. But if I surround myself with friends who are truthful... Well, then they're going to help make it easier when I get tempted not to tell the truth. Because they'll be there to support me, to pray for me. And when they see maybe some of that untruth, maybe stick here, or stick here, or stick here. They'll be able to come and be able to say, hey, give that part over to God. Because maybe we might not see it and be like, oh, yeah, Lord, please take this away. So be a good friend to one another. Make sure that you have good friends around you. And one of the ways of being a good friend is to think about how do I not think about myself first, but how do I think about the other person? And you know where we can start with that is with our families. Do you know that your family members are also called to be your friends? Now, maybe not like a friend going to school or so, but to be a friend is to always think about the other person and to say, how can I help this person get to heaven? How could I be used like Jesus used those friends around Lazarus to take off all those bandages so that he could go free? So that he could go free to follow the Lord. How can I be used to help my family be able to be free to love the Lord more and more? So maybe practice that. Try that as a challenge is to think about what can I do today and tomorrow and the next day. Try to think of each day. Try to find one way where I can be a real friend, a Christian friend to my neighbor, to my family member, to my friend. And ask the Lord for strength to be able to be surrounded by those friends that will help you on the journey to God out of the tomb, and into the joy of the Lord. Amen. So now we're going to pray the creed, which is that ancient prayer of the church that reminds us what we have always believed. So you can pray. 
pray this with me. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. now trusting in the life-giving power of the Spirit, we lift up our prayers and petitions to our Father in Heaven. And our response is going to be, Lord, hear our prayer. That all leaders and members of the Church may be graced with the guidance and wisdom of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders may be helped by God in putting aside selfish agendas and seek justice and equality for the people under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are in mourning may be consoled by God in their grief and made confident in the hope of resurrection for their loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the members of this faith community may receive the mercy of God for themselves and with his help offer it to others to be good neighbors and good friends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our beloved dead and all those who have died may know the joy and the fullness of life in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray especially for all doctors, all nurses, all those that are working with those who are sick amongst us. We thank you, Lord, for the way that they take care of us, and we ask that you take care of them as well. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those that are lonely, all those that might be afraid or might be ill at this time. We pray that, that you, Lord, might console them, might give them strength, and help them to know that you are always with them, even in the midst of their sufferings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let's pray that we might learn how to be good friends to one another, to be used by God, just as those friends of Lazarus were used to help him go free, that we might look for opportunities to lift one another up and help each other on the road to Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, with humble confidence, we ask you to hear these prayers in the name of Jesus, your Son, Amen. And now this is the time of the, we normally have the offertory that happens at this time, but since we don't really have anyone really in the church right now, sometimes what people do is they um, might go online, they might be able to help out their church, their, their parish church, so that's something to think about during this time as well. Lord, I 
brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our benefit of all his holy church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. For as true man he wept for Lazarus his friend, and as eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him the hosts of angels adore your majesty, and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. So this is that special time to allow the Holy Spirit when place my hands like this, the Holy Spirit wants to come here upon this bread and this wine to make them become the body of Christ. But he also wants to pour that Holy Spirit on you to fill you with his love, his strength, so that you can do great things in his name, loving others with his heart and with his love. So just open your heart and just allow it to be filled with his joy and strength you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
was it. He took the chalice, and once more in giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop, Richard our Administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. 
never let me be parted from you. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So it, was, it has been such a joy to be able to walk with you on this journey of the Mass right now. Let's keep praying for each other, and let's help each other by being good neighbors, good friends to one another, that we might learn how to help others go free in Christ. And the Lord wants to use you in a very powerful way to help the person right next to you. So think about, during this week, what can I do to help that person maybe feel um, uh, an even brighter day? feel more lighter in the Holy Spirit that they can continue on that journey towards Jesus. After I do the final blessing, I'll also, we're going to be able to go over to the Mary statue, and um, I'm going to just lead you in, a, in a, um, a praise song in which you can even have some hand motions and some things like that as well. So we're just going to do one of those songs um, after we finish with our closing, with our closing song. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And now we do our closing song. But you shall not die of thirst. You shall walk the in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face. Now we come to our Mother Mary here. Let's just ask Mary for the grace to love Jesus as we praise him in celebration of uh, this, this time of Mass. One of the ways that we can lift up our prayer is through praise. Just like St. Augustine would say, he who sings, prays twice. So we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So at this time, we'll just have a, an opportunity just to sing a song to the Lord. So see how Mary right now is holding the baby Jesus? And Jesus just has his arms open like this, 
because just like any little child, they love to hear songs. So let's sing this song to, to our Lord. And this is a song called Shout to the Lord. It's an oldie, but it's a goodie. It's a very beautiful song. And so this is a great time if you want to even to, um, if you want to stand during this time, if you want to sit, this is a song that you can do either way. Um, it's a very prayerful song. Um, and there are a couple different hand motions. So when we sing this song, the chorus is going to go, Shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us sing. So we're going to go like this, just like we're shouting, okay? Shout to the Lord, all the earth. See how it's like the globe and earth? Let us sing. And then power, this is where you show your big giant muscles. Power and majesty. So see that? Power and majesty. Praise to the king. We're just praising him. And then we're going to talk about mountains. So make a mountain. Mountains bow down and the seas. So make like an ocean wave. And the seas will roar at the sound of your name. So see how we were kind of focusing on our ears there? I sing for joy at the work of your hands. So like you guys are the work of his hands. So I'm singing for joy because God made you very special. The work of your hands Forever I'll love you, so a big giant hug. Forever I'll stand. You point to your toes. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. So you guys want to try this? Very cool. And this is one, when we sing it, we can have fun with it. But this is one where we want to go, not just with our voices, but we want to sing from our heart so that it comes up, and then we're able to say, Jesus, we love you. And we can even look to Jesus and Mary there, and we can say, Mary, help me to sing to the baby Jesus right here. Okay, I'm gonna just turn on this song. Okay, so for this part, going to lift our hands in praise. And we can just go back and forth. See, we're praising God even with our bodies.
something you can always go back to because um, this will just remain on that Facebook page so you can always go back to and you can just sing the song and just praise the Lord because Jesus just came to you spiritually in your heart you had a spiritual communion with him and he's filling you with his strength with his love so now you can go out shot out like that holy water balloon that missile to bring love and mercy to one another so go on that adventure with Jesus. God bless you, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.